Good morning class, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. Make sure you sign the register by leaving a comment down below, just like these fine people did in the last class. So this is the next class in the Game Dev series. So we're back in Unreal Engine. Last time we started setting the project up for our breakout clone. And there's a little bit more setup in this step where we're gonna be setting up the input so we can interact with the game and also getting the screen size correct so it's gonna work for a phone. So let's get stuck in. The first thing we'll do in this step then is get the input set up for our project which will allow us to interact with the game using the keyboard. So in order to do that we need to go to edit and we're going to go into the project settings first of all which gives us this beautiful window here and the place that we need to go to is just here which is input and the section we're concerned with at the moment is the action mappings and the axis mappings. So we'll start with the actions. And what we're going to need is some way to get the ball to go into play in the first place. So we're going to add an action mapping for this. And we'll just drop that down. And the first thing we'll ask us to do is to give it a name. So I'm just going to call it Fire, since we'll be firing the ball. And then once I press Enter to save that name, it asks me what key or keys I want to attach to that action. So in the first place, we're going to be going around the WASD keys. So I'm going to add the W key for this, which is just here. But then I want to add a couple more so that we can play the game in different ways. So I'm going to click the plus icon here. And I also want it so we can play on the arrow keys. So I'm going to add the up arrow key to that. So if we just go to search, and if we type up, there it is. So we've got the up option there. And just because it's a nice big key, I think we'll add the space bar as well. So we'll go plus one more time. And if I start typing space, there's space bar. So now all three of these buttons will trigger the fire action. We also need to be able to get the paddle to move left and right. And in order to do that, we're gonna add an axis mapping. So we'll click on plus again, and we'll drop this down. And I'm gonna call this one horizontal movement. Yep, I spelled it right, well done. So for this one, we're gonna have it on the A and D keys to go left and right. So we're going to add the A key, which will be in here somewhere. There it is. And we're also going to add the D key, which is just there. And then we're going to add the left arrow and the right arrow as well. There it is. So that's how we're going to control the paddle going side to side. At the moment, though, we need to change these. So D and right are OK because they're going to go to the the right, which is correct. But we, we need A and left to do the opposite of that. So instead of having 1 on the scale, we're going to have minus 1 on both of those values. So that's our action mapping set up. The next thing we need to do is make sure that we are developing for kind of a, a phone screen sort of size. So we can close the project settings for now. And in order to get the phone screen sort of size, we're going to go into the edit preferences. And I'm going to go to play, this play section here. And here you can see you've got common window sizes. And within that you've got phones and lots of different phones you can choose from. Most of these are quite high end. But because I want it to fit on screen quite easily, I'm just going to aim for the Samsung Galaxy S4, which will be something like that. And to test that out, if we just go to play here and we go to a new editor window, it will open this up and that gives us an idea of how our screen is going to look. So that's kind of your standard um, Galaxy S4 screen, but I actually want my screen size slightly different to that. So instead of 360 by 640, I actually prefer 480 by 640. You can have either or, it might just change how you set up your level. So I'm happy with that. You can, if you want, change between landscape and portrait using that button as well, which is pretty useful. Um, but we're going to be doing it in portrait mode. And the last thing I want to do for this step, we can just close the editor preferences, is to create a game mode, uh, which we'll not be using just yet, but it'll be ready for when we are. So I'm going to go into my content folder back up to the top. I'm going to create a new folder to keep it all organized and I'm going to call this my blueprints folder. Okay, like that. 
And within here, I'm going to create a new blueprint. So I'm going to go right click, a new blueprint class, and I'm going to choose a game mode. And the first thing I'll ask you to do is to give that game mode a name. So I'm going to call it BO, that's for breakout, not body odor, uh, BO game mode. And you should notice that I'm not putting any spaces in any of my names, I'm just capitalizing the first word, as is the convention. So that's set up and ready to go. And what I want to do now is make sure that this is the game mode that's being used when the game starts. And to get that to happen, I'm just going to go save all. You've got a little asterisk here, so I'm just going to do save all to make sure that that's saved. Go into my world settings, and you can see here there's this game mode override section. And if I choose my new game mode from here, BO game mode, that will be set up and ready to go. So that brings us to the end of what I wanted to cover in this step. In the next one, what we'll be doing is blocking out our level. So we're going to put some of the blocks in. We're going to put the ball in place and the paddle in place, get an idea of scale, get the bounds in so that we've got an idea going forward. Make sure it all fits within the phone screen as well. So hopefully I'll see you in the next step for that. I believe that quality education should be available to everybody and for that reason all of the classes at Game Dev Academy are completely free and we're supported by our very generous school governors over at Patreon. If you'd like to become a Game Dev Academy governor and support our work as well as helping us to steer the channel in the right direction then use the link in the description to be taken to the Patreon page.